would you improve Airbnb? How would you design the user experience for Airbnb users? Those are very typical interview questions in the product management interviews, especially for product design questions. However, most people do not understand what the best way to crack this case, even if we all have used Airbnb in the past. In this video, I'm going to share with you the mock interview I had with one of my students on Inside PM Accelerator, and this is the very first time she conducted a mock interview with me, but I'm very impressed by her performance. That's why we decided to reveal this mock interview to public, make sure that everyone can use the free training we provide you today and land your next dream PM job offer. All I want to ask you is share this video with any aspiring product managers and comment below once you land a job offer because of our free resources. I also know hundreds of you guys already land job offer but just by watching lots of YouTube videos of us. So make sure to like this video, subscribe and share this with any aspiring product managers. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy D, a direct product and featured in Forbes. I've helped hundreds of people land a dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continue to get promoted as a product leader. If you're interested in product management course, please go to pmaccelerator.io to learn more. To learn the most effective way to become product managers, you should subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell button to be notified every time I turn a new video every week. And they asked you to improve Airbnb. How would you open the case? What would you say to me? I would first... Um, define what the company mission and goal is. And then based on the current situation of the company plus the, the industry environment, then understanding what we're trying to solve here. Um, and by going into the customer segmentation, understanding the two-sided marketplaces, all the different customer segmentations list everything out. After that, asking the interviewer if I have covered all the, the segmentations or covered everything in my answers. Very good. Very good. Okay, so uh, let's let's do mock interview starting from top. If you come in to interview with me, what would you say to interviewer at the beginning? I'll say, hey, Mili, uh, today we're going to test your product sense. Can you help me to improve Airbnb? What would you say? Yes, for sure. Um, I... I would love to do that. And first of all, let me talk about what the Airbnb mission and mission statement is. And then after defining the mission statement, then I ask if I have identified the correct statement and uh, uh, going to um, like what exactly are we trying to improve here? Okay. So um, you are the product manager of Airbnb. You can improve anything of Airbnb. So mm -hmm. what do you think is the mission of Airbnb and why we're improving Airbnb? Um, okay. Airbnb. It's a marketplace for customers trying to list out their their properties for for rent or even for the experiences, and then also for the travelers to be able to select and rent a property specific lo uh, location or the experience. Mm -hmm. So for them to share information back and forth on this one marketplace. Yeah. Uh, why do you think we need to improve it in today's case? Why we need to improve it. I guess, first of all, we need to find which customer segmentation we are focusing on and then what kind of issues or um, what kind of problems they're facing and then identify how urgent the problem is, the size of the market, et cetera, and also the risk involved in order to see what exactly we should focus, like which. I'm which not saying how, is. I'm not saying how. Why do you think we need to, we need to improve Airbnb? We're at the beginning of the case. Why we need to improve it. You need to comprehend the situation. In the interview. So what would you say? I guess right now, interview? let's say, for example, under the COVID environment, there's a lot of safety concerns for customers by um, renting or going into these properties, wanting to know that they're protected or that safety would not be a concern for them. Very good. Very good. Okay. So in an interview, I would say the following. I would say, yeah, it's very, very, very interesting case regarding improving Airbnb. Based on what I understand regarding Airbnb, by the way, I Google Airbnb's mission. Even if you don't know, it's okay. You can say just what you said. Okay, so based on my understanding of Airbnb's mission, which is creating, uh, making people feel like, a uh, creating experience for make people feel like they belong anywhere, everywhere. So they can use Airbnb as a platform to find places to rent, create experience and exchange information with, with hosts and guests. So this is a perfect platform to achieve the mission. Um, of course, there's always room for improvement. As we can imagine, as we're just getting out of COVID, there is a surge of demand of people traveling, hasn't been traveled for two years. And now 
uh, Airbnb's design and customer experience has been the pre-COVID, but co- customers like uh, demand and expectation have changed dramatically. So therefore, uh, we need to think about a new way to meet the demand of customers. That's why. And then you, you follow up with a question. You say, so that's what I believe why we're working on this case. Uh, what I do next is I'm going to dive into the detailed analysis re- regarding customer segmentations, um, understand any unmet needs, and then come to create the right product for customers. So before I move forward, is there anything I missed? That's it. Completely. You say, then the interview will say, yes, let me tell you more, or be like, uh, nothing, yes, but you're on, to me, or that you're on the right track. Yes, we just need to improve it. Okay, and then we go to customer segmentation. Very good. Okay, so, uh, Mini, what would you say in the interview? So for customer segmentations, I have divided into different categories. The first one, host. And then under host, I will list out, um, so the different hosts would be property owners who wants to be sharing the space with the renters. And then there will be also property agents, so companies and also independent agents Mm -hmm. that are managing the properties. The investment property owners that are trying to gain a profit for renting out their properties and businesses so such, such as hotels, conference spaces, they just want to rent out this open space. And then for the, um, the second customer segmentations I identified would be the experience providers. So under the experience category offered by Airbnb, uh, we would offer, there will be day tours, excursions uh, from these experience providers, also third-party providers. The number three would be guests. So the guests would be the largest customer segmentation, I believe. And then we'll have the travelers here, travelers usually usually for uh, vacations, and um, they may travel in families, solos, couples, and also um, a guest with uh, disabilities and also guests staying with pets. Also under guests, we will have uh, short-term or long-term renters. So for mm-hmm. example, if we have other, we have someone that wants to seek a job from um, someone traveling from Thailand to U.S. trying to seek a PM role, and they may want to stay there for around 30 days trying to get that job. And then we we'll also have corporate gatherings and also when, uh, weddings, parties, event guests. Also, the fourth customer segmentation, my last one, would be property management service providers. That would be the cleaning services, uh, booking services, concierge service, and also the insurance companies. Great. So for the guest customer segmentation, did you segment it twice? Did you, you, you first talk about different type of uh, guests? You talk about like people with disabilities or people going for leisure, people come with a group in terms of having families. And then you said for all of them, they also have short-term, long-term rental. Do you, did you, did you cut it twice? Did you do sub-segmentation yes, twice? Yes, I did cut. Um, so for the travelers, those would include families, couples, disabilities, traveling with guests. And then the other one would be short-term, long-term renters. Oh, okay. Travelers. And then second one would be renters. Travelers, uh, renters. Great. Cool. So to make it more clear in your presentation, you can have travelers and renters. That's it. Don't make okay. it short-term, long-term. It's, it's too too early. So now you talk about for the guests, the travelers and renters. Within travelers, different kind of travelers. For renters, and you can shorten long term. Um, I think you you missed up to make it clear. There are renters and travelers. We only have two. Under the two, I have sub segmentation to make it very clear to the interviewer, or they think they are merged into the same column because they're in different levels. Okay, but your your answer is great. I like it. Regarding all the customer segmentation, which one would you prioritize and why? If we only have forty five minutes to improve Airbnb. I would prioritize the segmentation based on the impact, the size of market, and the agency, and then give uh, give a score. You mean urgency? For... You mean urgency, not agency. urgency? Okay. Sorry, urgency. Yeah, and then gave a score based on all of these categories, trying to uh, identify which one scores the highest in terms of if they if this is the most urgent problem or focus group, and the um, if they have the highest impact on the whole situation. Um, hold this this product we're trying to build and um, also the what was the other one the impact the urgency and the size, size. of market which one has the biggest in size market so I'll focus on the guests when you define size of market is based on revenue or based on number number of people based on number of people but I would think it will be the same right more Why? people more revenue true Great. So they might challenge an interview, just need to defend yourself, but it's the right answer. It's based on 
the number of people want to serve. And because usually the monetization will come up later, but usually, yeah, the more user you have, the more likely you are able to monetize better. So we want to serve more people first and then later on figure out how can you serve more high network clients to make more money later on. But you, know, you figure out the, the people first, uh, mm -hmm. numbers. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, very good answer. I like it. Maybe in your answer, we need to further prioritize which guest we need to prioritize. Right. So the three different segments, segments, sub-segments under guests would be travelers, renters, uh, co corporate gatherings, and also event planning, event mm -hmm. planners, I guess. Yeah. So um, again, I would prioritize them according to the impact, the size of market, and also the urgency. And I would choose um, travelers based on the highest scoring. Why? Because I feel like the travelers are the ones that, for obvious reasons, they're the biggest size of market, most uh, highest number of people. And also they'll have the urgency since uh, we're past COVID now. And then everyone, we have a lot of high demand for travelers wanting to um, finally go out and explore other places. So there's an urgency there. And then also for the impact, I think by, by the problems that they are facing, the impact would be more significant for these travelers. Why do you think the impact is more significant for travelers? Um, given lots of, let's say, event planners, they, they didn't make money in the past two years, right? So why do you think it's more significant to travelers, not other businesses as part of those segmentations? Because the demand is higher than the supply there. So if we're if more people are trying to get out there to rent places for these um, travelers, then for businesses, even though um, during COVID, they may be faced with more like the COVID situation might have impacted the businesses more. But then now as we have more demand, I think the impact for these demand trying to find a place where everywhere else is booked would be higher in terms of the impact. Very good. Very good argument. OK, do the same thing in the interview. We'll pass the interview. This is very good. OK. <laughs> Okay, so Mili, here, here thing. What would you do to say to the interviewer after you finish prioritization? After finishing prioritization, now I know uh, we have a focus on travelers under guest segmentation, and then we want to identify the pain points they're facing with, so the problems. Some of the problems I identified would be dissatisfied service, not having enough amenities for the properties they're looking to rent, and then also the home security, home safety, Sorry, so COVID safety is one of the concerns, health safety. And the other one is where the uh, where these homes are located that they're looking to travel to. If it's in a, like a ghetto spot, if they have a concern for the neighborhood, the neighborhood's safety. And then the third problem would be the, um, what I, which I identify would be the cancellation and refund policies. Why, what post COVID, why safety is a thing? During COVID, safety is important. What post COVID, why safety is because one I of the like pain points? Right. And um, people have more cautiousness for the health safety after the COVID. So during maybe before before COVID, people weren't thinking much about how um, how clean the homes needs to be for health reasons. But then after after having COVID, after this, everything died down. Now, I think people gets to realize how much they need to think about the safety issues within the homes they're looking to rent. Very cool. Your argument is so good, by the way. I think I've had an interview your argument. Very tiny, very good. Okay. So your 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 final pain point, which is about whatever, check in, check out. What do you mean? Uh oh. My last pain point was actually the cancellation and refund oh, calls. Okay, tell and, me more. What do you mean? Yeah. The reason why I chose that to be a problem is because um what if this COVID situation were to change all of a sudden? When they have to tighten the policies, tighten the COVID restrictions again then I believe the cancellation and refund policies will become a concern for our, our customers. You were saying that if they tighten again, there will be some problems, but I don't think they will tighten. I, I, don't, I don't follow the logic. Okay. Um, so I was actually thinking here, if COVID restrictions were to come tighten around again, again, yes, wow. to be tightened again, they want to, what well, clients wants to ensure that they have a fair cancellation and refund policy in order to prevent these um, perhaps for foreseeable circumstances. Currently on Airbnb, there's already, you can choose flexible cancellation or 24 hours cancellation. Uh, as a host, you can choose the cancellation policy. You can make it very 
flexible already. Yes, you can, but I feel like it's not a standardized enough. So for some of the properties, you may be able to get fifty percent of your money back if you choose to cancel within a certain number of days. Mm-hmm. But then for other prop and for other properties, you might get your money back if cancel like three days before your trip. But yeah. there are also other properties where you just you don't have a cancellation policy in place at all. I feel like that could be standardized. I see. You want to standardize the process. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. All right. So that one is medium. The answer to that thing is medium because I wouldn't bring up the COVID is coming back again. So because because including the interviewer, including myself, everyone was be like, mm, I don't think we'll come back again. Uh, we also hope we won't come back again. And I also the whole world just felt like it's not going to come back again. We at least we think this way, or, or we don't we don't prevent it coming back again. We might have new disease, other stuff. Um, so therefore, I wouldn't be making assumptions. COVID come out again, we need to change the policy, different things. When you re- if you want to stick to this pain point, we need to completely restructure the answer. For example, you can say, currently, one of the biggest pain points for people travel for Airbnb on, uh, through Airbnb is that there's no standardized process for cancellation. When people are very excited to book a place and then things happen, you need to change or cancel. Um, each places, the host have this own very flexible way to uh, to set your own cancellation policy. That's for the host, but it's really bad for, for the guest because the policy is different for each place, so stay. Um, so as a guest who are having like, like competition high demand, not be able to find right places at the right time, it's already very stressful to find the right place. And now once you book a place, um, and then cancellation policies are uh, uh, across the board. So therefore, um, so therefore, one of the important, uh, one of the biggest pain point for them is to have a standardized cancellation policy to collect the right of the the guest. You can say it this way, but I still, I still feel like I'm less convinced. I still feel like this this pain point is, is weaker compared with the first two. Okay, so you can swap out this one and create something more convincing. The key is uh, your argument is very strong and then has to be very convincing. Okay. okay, because your last argument is just not very strong, so it makes this one not very convincing. Okay, so Mili, so tell me which one would you prioritize and why? So I would prioritize based on different categories. One of them would be the complexity of designing this product. So engineering complexity. Uh, the second one would be the risk involved. The third one would be, third category would be um, implementation. The ease to implement implement this product. And the other one would be, um, I think I'm missing one there. I can't remember risk. the last The risk. risk. Okay, I think I covered risk too. Um, Say yeah, it again. So, so hold on. You risk, cover risk? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Engineering complexity. Ease to implement. Effectiveness. Effectiveness, yes. Effectiveness. Oh, hold on, hold on. Slow down. Slow down. No, 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 no. You haven't, you're not in a solution yet. You're prioritizing the pain point. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, we're wrong framework, wrong framework. Okay, so <laughs> pain point, you go back to see the same thing. You use use the prior framework, oh, like okay. a customer segmentation, frame. wrong framework. Okay, so what's the right framework you use? The urgency. Hmm. Um, urgency, we need, we need to solve this problem by. And if it's applicable to the entire market, to the entire, entire segment, oh. I don't remember the framework for for pain points. Similar size of market so okay. doesn't have to be all the market. It's like do a lots of people suffer from the same pain point, or only one person suffer from the same pain point. That's different. Okay, so it's same framework. So size of market, how many people suffer from this pain point, and how bad those, how much pain, right? For example, the last one cancellation is less painful compared with other pains you described yeah. earlier. All right, and uh, and then uh, what's the last one? Um, the urgency of it, and then the impact. Mm-hmm. So, so basically, the impact means how how much pain. So, urgency means do you want to solve it yesterday? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, do lots of people suffer from this? If lots of people suffer from it, they want to solve it yesterday. They cannot wait. Uh, and it's so much pain. You don't solve it. They're gonna die tomorrow. You solve this immediately. So, based on this framework, which one? Which one would you prioritize? So based on this framework, I would prioritize the dissatisfied dissatisfied service, meaning that there may not be enough amenities in the properties as described in the property description. The the reason why I choose this is because the urgency, so definitely client will have a a need for having enough amenities, for example, enough blankets at home to keep them warm. Um, And this would be like a key need for these customers. 
we want to solve, we want to identify this pain point for them. And also the um, the impact I think is also huge is because, I mean, like why would anyone rent a place that doesn't have enough, does, does not have enough amenities? Like for uh, how would they wash their hair if they don't have any shampoo or um, et cetera, like body wash and stuff. And then also I think the size of this, well, the pain point, the size of this pain point is also huge as well because this will be a key feature and we need to, every single property needs to make sure that they have enough uh, amenities as described on their property listing for the users to make a decision if they want if they want to rent it or not. Because if they come into a place that does not have enough amenities, then it will get a really bad experience um, from this. I see. Okay, cool. So I understand the importance of having enough amenities uh, amenities. Do lots of people suffer from this not knowing having enough amenities? I think all the Airbnb that by default they should have shampoo stuff. Um, do lots of people actually suffer from oh lacking lacking shampoos? Are the size market really big? So the reason why I selected this was because like I'm a high user of Airbnb, and if I were to travel in groups of um, few, like traveling with a few friends, I find sometimes they may have some towels, but not enough for all of us to use. Mm. I see. So basically, and um, do you encounter this a lot? I have, yes. I have encountered um, where there's not a, enough amenities. For example, mm-hmm. there's not enough Frequency. wine glasses for all of us. I mean, I'm, I'm, I doubt the size of the market. I doubt it's only one or two people not having enough shampoo or towels. Not everyone feels the same way. So did you yourself experience this as high frequency, lacking amenities right now? I did, yes, space? but I would love to conduct more customer interviews to see if other people are having the same pains. <laughs> Okay, cool. All right. So it looks like it's a trend. All right. So now in the interview, you need very you, you really need to be like, this is a trend. This is what everybody is is experiencing. Uh, I haven't traveled on Airbnb for a while. Uh, I didn't know it's like missing shampoo is a thing. Um, so you 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 really need to be like with with supporting numbers or, or supporting experience, saying that this has been a trend, lots of complaints. And this is like one of the top five complaints of Airbnb is not having enough amenities when people travel, missing stuff. Um, the impact is big. You get in a place and then you're missing towels when you get a shower. That's really bad, whatever. Like, so you, uh, you need to have uh, more supporting evidence. Okay, so assuming this is lots of people suffer from not having enough shampoo stuff. Um, so what solution would you design for them? Some of the solutions I can think of would be, uh, first of all, the Airbnb should have a list of all the amenities there are and the number of, let's say, towels or blankets. And based Mm. on this, we'll be able to uh, know beforehand how many you would really need. And you can communicate back and forth, making sure that there's enough before you get to the place. So creating a list that both sides will be able to make sure that there's enough for the users. Um, that would be the first solution I can think of. The other one would maybe, or my moonshot idea would probably be designing like a virtual space where even before customers gets uh, goes to the place physically, they're able to view um, uh, on a virtual screen exactly what this place looks like and all the amenities that are already in place. They'll be able to see, hey, is there like a um, shampoo or is there toilet paper? Is there etc or wine glasses and stuff like they may be able to open the cabinet even through this virtual space so i think that'll be a cool feature to have um that'll be the second solution and then the third solution that i can think of would be maybe having like a chat box built into this airbnb that you can but there's already that communication feature already built in Mm -hmm. um maybe in like an automated chat box feature built into this Airbnb that it doesn't have to be the owner of the place that are replying to these standardized or not standardized, sorry, repetitive messages, just confirming some of the, the, the features or the amenities are, are there. So for these repetitive questions, we can build like an FAQ, but that is automated system into this chat box where the users will be able to get answers quickly. Like they don't have to wait for the next day for the, the owner to wake up to respond to the messages. Very good. Okay, so let let me modify your final answer, which is using a chat GPT integrated Q&A to answer mm-hmm. uh, repetitive questions regarding amenities where 
where's the location of the place? Do you have this? Do you have this or don't have that? Make sure to buy this, make some milk for baby before I arrive, things like this. So chat, yeah, you need to use keywords, chat GPT integrated chatbot. Okay. Because it's very trendy right now. Mm -hmm. Cool. But I do like the answer thing. So which one would you prioritize and why? So I would prioritize based on the um, ease to implement. How easy is it to implement this product? And then the second one would be the engineering complexity behind it. How difficult it is to build this product. The uh, the risk. So the risk, compliance, regulatory concerns that are with uh, launching this product. And the, um, so there are three there. And then the effectiveness of this product. So based mm -hmm. on these four, um, I would, I would probably build the, uh, I would probably go with my third solution, the one where it's a chat GPT integrated chat box, because we already have the chat GPT feature. So by uh, integrating this feature onto, onto the Airbnb, so we're really integrating the features that are currently out there, we, we already have. So I think there, there's not, um, the engineering complexity behind it is lower to its sense that we're already working with what we have and the ease to implement, I think it's pretty easy as well. Um, I don't see this being uh, more of a challenge. And then for the risk that's associated, uh, these are just repetitive questions. I don't see any compliance regulatory concerns behind launching this product. And then the effectiveness, I think it'll be very effective. So let's say, for example, I may be staying at an Airbnb during the night. In the middle of the night, I wake up, I find out, I find that like I'm really cold. There's not enough blanket. If I reach out to the owner of the property, they're not going to respond back to me before daytime. So if I can use this chat box to get my answers or to find out where they stored more blankets in the property, um, I'll be able to resolve my pain point. This is amazing. The solution is very good. And how you justify solutions is also very good. I think what past interview, based on how eloquent you are justifying your answers, the only thing we need to improve is your pain point, the justi some of the justification of the pain point need to be improved. Either you swap the pain point with something more pain or something more obvious that people can get it, um, or your justification needs to sound stronger with more supporting point. Okay, but your solution is very good. Customer segmentation is also very good. Your, um, your deliverable in terms of making things very short and concise is also very good as well. I like it. Thank you, Dr. Awesome. Yes. I think we'll, I think we'll pass interview. Okay, you ready to go for interview? Ah, I think for you. Okay, so I think your interview ready. I think your interview ready for cases. Maybe did a fantastic job doing this case. And one of the resources to use is those top 10 clarifying questions you should ask an interviewer feel free to go to the website right here and download those questions so that you're able to ask great questions during those product manager interviews. Make sure to watch the playlist of product manager interview questions and answers to get ready for your next upcoming interviews as well. Make sure to like, comment, and share this video with any product manager who is going through very intensive interview preparation. This is Dr. Nancy Lee. I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye, guys.